I always, and I know you do too, is enjoy Brother Michael's proclamations and his insights. They're wonderful. And uh, Brother Mike told me last night what his topic was. We went to his house to, to bring food to them, and he told me, I thought, wow, where, where have I ever heard preaching like this? So we are a very privileged people to hear these things. And, uh, and yet I'm very intimidated because I'm a child when it comes to proclamations in standing after a beloved brother like this. So I'll just, I'll, I'll, I will seek to just limit myself to just these couple of things. I want to use Ephesians 1, um, about verse 9 and 10, just kind of as a backdrop for this exhortation. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. I thought this was very appropriate that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth. In fact when you, gave, when you said that topic last night that's what I was thinking of. This is a, this is a good backdrop for our exhortation. The question is, in the end, do you want to be disappointed or do you want to not be ashamed? God's will is the only will that will not be frustrated ultimately. His is the only one. It looked, as bro I think, Brother Gibbon, I think you're the one that mentioned this this morning, it looked at times as if maybe the purpose wasn't going to be able to go forward. Some obstacles or whether coming from men or in circumstances. I thought of a number of things. How about the Tower of Babel? That was one. God had told men to spread out through the earth and multiply, and they thought, well, we'll just, we'll just unite together, and we're just going to stay right here and build us a temple unto God. It was pride, the pride of life that was moving in them. Well, it didn't, it didn't take much for God to frustrate that, did it? And His will went forward. I thought of in the days of Noah... How about this for something that is so contrary to what God is doing? God is bringing all things together in one, which includes men. But in the days of Noah, violence had covered the earth, which would have included men's violent tendencies toward one another. That would seem so contrary to what God was doing, and yet God, in with ease, his, his plan wasn't frustrated at all. He just wiped the earth clean, saved Noah and eight, eight souls together, and the purpose went forward. How about Pharaoh in the days of Moses? Here was the most powerful man in the world as far as we understand. And yet when that man said, I'm not going to let your people go, well, he had greatly conflict with what God's purpose was. God had already determined. He had heard the cries of his people. God never intended for them to stay in Egypt. But he said, I'm not going to let him go. Well, the steamroller of God's eternal purpose just rolled over Pharaoh. And he raised him up and brought him down. When we come closer to the one who's going to be the means by whom this all would be brought together, which is the man Christ Jesus, Herod thought he would stop this. Because he perceived this king to be in competition with him. Remember that? And so he thought he would kill all the children two years and younger, and that would take care of it. But even in such a... Think of... Here is God's eternal purpose, if I can say it this way. Forgive me if my language is crude here. In a person, in the man Christ Jesus, as a fragile baby, the most vulnerable that he could be as a man, and yet Herod couldn't even kill his child. Yeah. Out of Egypt have, my call, have I called my son... And he was saved, and God's eternal purpose went forward. See, I'm, showing, I'm just giving you these few examples to let you know there is nothing, or as God would put it, I will do all my pleasure, and who will let it? That means God puts his hand to the plow of his eternal purpose. Now, who, whether men or angels, is going to put their hand on his hand and say, whoa, hold on. No man can stop God from doing this purpose. Amen. And his purpose is ultimately this, to gather all things together in one, 
in Christ Jesus. Now, Brother Mike, you said this. I thought this was so good. When God moves into the temple that Jesus has built, it will be a sure sign that God has approved of what Jesus has done. I'll tell you generally why I love that. Because it's such a Christ-centered affirmation. This is about what God is doing through Christ Jesus. Christ is central to what God is doing. We are not. Mm -hmm. Amen. The government rests on His shoulders. It doesn't rest on your shoulders. The kingdom of heaven doesn't rise or fall on the basis of your participation. But it does rise or fall upon the basis of Christ's participation. Amen. See, He's central. Yeah. Think, of, think of just a few things about Christ that show forth His centrality that we know that are not true of any other man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Think of that. Think of the fact that the worlds were created by him and for him. Think of that. It's all made for him. And he made it. Think of this. Jesus is the only one who was completely righteous in his own works. He is the righteous one. All other men, as we've said this morning, obtain their righteousness by faith. Jesus did not obtain his righteousness by faith. Jesus was righteous by nature. Okay? Jesus is the only one who has provided a sacrifice to remove all the sins of the world. See, Jesus is the center of this thing. Amen. He's the center of it. Okay? Now I'm saying that to give you this exhortation. As you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, so walk ye in Him. If God is gathering all things together in Him, then you already have a token of astounding favor because you're all already in Christ. You've got a first fruit token that ultimately God's intention is for you to be part of this full gathering that's going to take place. So now, the appropriate exhortation is now, take full advantage of this fellowship that God has brought you into when He was faithful. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of His dear Son. Continue to receive Jesus. What Brother Gibbon had said recently was so provoking. If you honor the name of Christ, God will honor you. If you make much of Jesus, God will make much of you. That's what this is all about. So let's be encouraged to be faithful to Christ. And if you think, nobody here thinks that this is like an easy thing. I know we don't. It's easy to say it. Well, we're going to walk in Christ. We're going to be. We're going to be faithful to Christ. But this is what the primary target of Satan toward God's people is to get something between his people and Christ. Because he knows if they stay in Christ, God's purpose will not be frustrated in Jesus. Amen. Everybody that is faithful to Christ is going to end up gathered together. Now, let me give you one more thing just to encourage, just to encourage your anticipation of this. Because you already got in first fruits this gathering together. Okay? How about this? Jew and Gentile are gathered together in Christ. Two of the most hostile groups. You thought blacks and whites are hostile. You haven't seen anything. Jew and Gentile, extremely hostile. So hostile that it took some time for the church to realize that God had in fact intended to bring the Gentiles in, although God had said a lot about this. Okay, Peter went to Cornelius' house. God hath appointed by my mouth that salvation come, come to the Gentiles. They've come together in Christ. Maybe you know a Jewish brother that you have fellowship with. It's a great token of what Christ is doing. Get up on a higher level. You've kept Christ's commands, and so the Father and the Son have made their abode in you. That's a remarkable thing. Here you are on earth, and yet God and His Son who is in heaven has made their abode in you. It's like a foretaste of this heaven and earth coming together. How about this? You have been seated in heavenly places. Hmm? 
Here you're, you're walking on the earth, and yet by faith you have been elevated from the earth into a heaven. These are all like tokens that are telling us what God has done, is bringing these two together. How about this? Every day you are assisted by heavenly servants who are sent out like a flame of fire. Those holy angels. You are assisted by them every day to work out your own salvation. They are from heaven, you're on earth, and yet you're obtaining benefit from them. How, one more thing. How about this? We have made so much of Abraham, Paul especially, other godly brethren who, because we are giving our attention to their conversation, now they are among those cloud of witnesses that are, so to speak, encouraging us along in our race. This is a very real fellowship. They are in heaven. huh? You are on earth. And yet you are enjoying their fellowship. So you're enjoying the first fruits of this. You already, you already have in first fruits what this is going to be like. It's going to be a glorious day when we all sit together at the table. Sit down in the kingdom with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To be served by... <laughs> The highest dignity of heaven besides God himself, the Son of God. So let me encourage you, brethren, stay faithful to Christ. How are you receiving Christ today compared to how you received him when you came in? And only you can really answer that. I, I, I see your progress. So I can see any kind of progress you're making is because you're walking by the faith of Christ Jesus. So let's be encouraged to do this because the government's on his shoulders and he's the one seeing to it yeah. that this purpose is carried out. And you'll be involved in it to the degree that you are in fellowship with Christ. So that's my exhortation for you today. We open for your comments.